heading up to uh, Brand just got here at International Falls. A little bit of going to about 1:30 on Saturday, and uh, we're heading up to uh, Click Tim, and then we're heading out in the boat to go uh, do some fishing here. And a little bit warm today, but we'll see how they they bite. Hopefully, it won't be so bad. But right now, I'm trying to get this camera mounted so that it works better than it. Okay, probably a little bit bumpy, but we'll see how it works. And uh, go get him and head out. Otherwise, it's a great, great day. Okay, yeah, he's at another hotel because what happens is. You know, if you get, don't get up here and get your reservations made ahead of time, a lot of your fishermen come up here on Fridays and stay the one day at the hotel, which obviously everybody in town knows, and then they take and head up to Canada. So they try to get out of here early on Saturday because of the, the lines that can get quite long at the border. And... Uh, so that's the reason Saturday or Fridays are a little bit busier um, than the rest of the week uh, as far as hotel reservations go. So let me put on another stabilizer here. Hopefully that'll be enough now to stabilize this enough until I get set up a little bit better, but it may be all right here. It's gonna take a little bit. about maybe 10 minutes to get over to where he's at. If that, maybe about five at the most. And then we'll, he's all set, so all we have to do is grab him, get the boat, and go. And uh, hopefully we'll be all right, but today it might be a little bit busy. We'll see, there's a lot of boats in town. And I know that they're pre-fishing for next week's tournament. So, We'll see uh, how crowded it is once we get out to the Rainy Lake area, and hopefully uh, we'll go. We're gonna go to the park section, and uh, we'll launch from there. Uh, because the smaller launches are gonna be quite busy, I'm sure. So we'll see. So I'm gonna stand by until I get to Brandon. Should take just a couple more minutes. Maybe I'll just let it run and. Uh, Take just a couple minutes to get there and get him collected and get going. But International Falls, you know, another story about this place is that uh, it, they don't have their own water. So a lot of the times, if you want to live like in an area up here, you have to uh, pay for fresh water to be delivered to your house because the, the, it's so uh, rocky that they can't dig down through it. It's granite, granite shelf. And uh, it's best if people just uh, have water delivered to either above tanks, above ground tanks, or below ground tanks. So that's getting into a little bit of the weeds, but a lot of people come up here to do fishing. Rainy Lake, Rainy River, very, very popular, especially because of the walleye. And uh, the paper mill up here, Boise Cascade, if I'm not mistaken, is the largest paper mill in the United States or possibly the world, but it's, it's split between Canada and the United States. And uh, that's mainly the big industry in this area. Uh, my uncles and my cousins all have worked there at one point or another and have retired from there. Uh, it's a union job, so they do pretty good. But over the years, like all unions, has changed. But the scenery, when we get out to the, uh, the park there, you'll see just how nice it is. And uh, looking forward to, we'll be up here until Tuesday night into Saturday, so we've got at least four good days. We're gonna try to get out fishing. The weather's supposed to be, you know, staying uh, pretty good for those days. And uh, hopefully, 
we catch our slot limits and have a good time and and get this filmed and get it presented to the folks on Fishing Glass. And uh, I know I promised this for the, the Fishing Glass audience that it would be posted. And I think it'll go well. And uh, like I said, we're almost there now. This is something new that they actually built up here is they finally got a tractor supply store here in International Falls which is a big deal because other than that it's just Menards and Tractor Supply is over here on the left and they're also building a big grocery store here now which is uh, combining the two local store, grocery stores into one so they're going to have uh, uh, one giant supermarket which would probably be better because you get more produce and stuff like that in one location and then they'll be good. So this place he's staying at is called Riverfront Hotel. I'm staying at the America Hotel uh, for, for in for today. But we'll see what's... Uh, oh, I went right past it too. Dang. So I'm going to turn around here a second. Just give me a minute. Yeah, we'll be able to get down there. <laughs> Riverfront. Yeah, look at the sign. Drove right by it. So anyways, we're almost there, and he was maybe worried about plugging in his car to charge up his, his trolling water after today, but they got all the outlets outside that you can plug into, and there's, you know, like I said, everybody headed north across the border today, so we'll be all right that way. And there is his rig in the setup right there in front with his Ford truck and his Alum, or craft liner. And, uh... Here we are, here we go. So he's getting there, oh, he's taking off the... Okay, all right. Let me back up here. I want to get photographs of this. He's taking off the top. Okay. Set. We're going to head out to Rainy Lake now and stop and get some more ice on the gas station on the way out there. And we'll be going fishing. So stand by and here we go. This is 71 here at the International Falls, and I believe this is the school over here on the left. Yeah, this place you can still. We're going to go past some of the. Uh, as you can see out there on the horizon, that's the, uh, the Boise Cascade uh, Mill, paper mill. It's got one of the largest, I believe, paper rollers in the world at that mill. And uh, been in business, God, a long time. You know, you look throughout the industry and you think that the paper mills are going to be shutting down because everybody's trying to go, you know, digital and 
do away with paper. At least that's what they've been pushing for years and years and years. And yet, they still, you know, Congress, you know, if you look at anything about Congress, look at the papers that they file every year. And they probably say it's got to be electronic and written. So it's quite a demand still for paper. But this is a fishing trip. And uh, so we're going to be using, I know we got bottom bouncers today, some jigs, as well as worms and night crawlers. Oh, I got to get the night crawlers. I forgot the night crawlers. I know we got the worms. Um, and I may get some minnows as well. And uh, uh, on our way out there. So. This is downtown, a part of downtown anyways, International Falls. I mean, they say that, you know, it gets pretty dull up here during the winter, but it really doesn't because, you know, you think the summer's busy with uh, bass tournaments or fishing tournaments that they have and all the people coming through going to Canada. Well, it's just as busy in the winter because everybody wants to come up here snowmobiling, ice fishing, whole nine yards. So, so it's a pretty much around the, you know, it's an industry that goes through winter, fall, summer, and all year long. And then they do the little parade things here like Elks, Brat, Corn, Feed, August 18th. That's a big, that's like uh, yesterday. Because today is the 19th. Here's another part of downtown. The mill's over to the left. I just got to make sure I'm going out the right way. Because uh, as we go through town here, and there's a, lot, a little bit of construction going on, but I think I go straight, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we'll see. That's going to the border. We are not going to the border, so we will be turning right here. Some of the off to the right there, some of the pulp that comes out of the the uh, the mill, and then Rainy River is on the left side over there when we we're turning left here. And we'll get we'll get pictures of all that when I do. Uh, I'll try to do a quick tour of the mill while I'm up here. But uh, yeah, this is uh, it's a pretty big industry, and then every year they bring workers in when they do a shutdown, and they go through the the mill and do repairs or upgrades, whatever needs to be done. Uh, but it's about, we're going to go fishing here, it's probably going to take about, uh, I don't know, 15 minutes I suppose to get out there. And it's just a one-way road going out there and then there's the park, we're going to get into the park area today. And on the left side up here is Rainier, uh, which is another little town. Uh, a lot of little towns up in here in this area and little, little communities. A lot of them come into National Falls because it's the largest town in the area. Yet, uh, you know, it's limited a lot of, even the Walmarts on the Canadian side. It's not even on the U.S. side. So unless you have your special license with the uh, modification to the license, which is, you know, you can use to go across the border or you got to have a passport. You used to be able to do it, you know, some years back with just a driver's license, but not no more. Uh, and then especially with COVID, it's really changed. But 
Yeah, so it's it's a it's a nice area and, and people love it up here and the weather, you know, if you can handle the cold a little bit and the winter does get a little bit cool. Uh, when I say a little bit, it can get below zero by quite a bit. But uh, yeah, it's definitely an outdoor paradise. And then if you go along the Rainy River inside the little communities, well, I might take you a trip around that. They got little uh, uh, housing communities along the river. They're semi-private. And uh, then you start getting up into, uh, you know, big, nice log cabins and things along that nature. But it can be quite expensive to uh, build up here, especially along the river. And I know that, like, a lot of communities, see, here's Rainier on the left side. You see the little uh, axe man there. And uh, like I say, if I get a chance, I'll stop over there and we'll go through that. But the... Uh, the river itself is going through like a lot of communities where they're installing water and sewage and uh, they want that, their utilities, and they want that all to be added into the, the price of the property. And uh, But having said that, it's, you know, a lot of people have summer homes up here, either here or Canada. And uh, yeah, it's, it's like a pass-through area, it's kind of like... Um, Connecticut is between Boston and New York, pass-through state. And uh, the Voyager here park is uh, pretty unique. They have houseboats and everything else on it. If I get a chance, again, I'll show you the houseboats where they're at. And I know that there's a there's a heck of a delay on that as far as uh, getting or, or renting the houseboat. Um, you know, it's probably eight months out or two years out. I know it's quite, because they don't have, you know, they have a limited amount. And uh, they're always constantly, constantly booked. But last year up here, they had a major flood. Uh, the waters went up, I don't know, I'd have to say it's, you know, between 10 and 15 feet in some areas, quite a bit. And uh, I know it kind of washed out some of the industry uh, that relies upon tourism because of the flooding. And, uh, but anyways, this is the Stenix up here on the right side. We're going to pick up some ice, and uh, then we're going to head out. And it won't be much longer, but I'm going to pause it here while we get the ice, and then we'll continue. And we're going to the park here. Because there's little outlets in between here and there that are worthwhile seeing. I can, I can edit it out if there's nothing. But, uh... You never know what you might see, maybe a bear I come across. I did see one bear on the way up. It was on the edge of the woods, that's about it, it was a black bear. And uh, they say you don't see them so much anymore, like they used to be. And I don't know if that's just because of hunting or they cleaned up the area, not so much, you know lay the garbage out because that's always a problem. People put garbage out. But uh, there's a whole bunch there. There are several of them along here but they aren't very big. Small bull launches. Then when you get out to Shea Shea which is on the very end it's like a private area, a private little island. It's got its uh, hotel and its own boat launch area there. And I'm sure that they, I've read it boats out there before, but I think they probably charge if you want to launch your own boat. Not sure about that, but hey, it may be worthwhile checking out to see if they do. Simply because some of these parks go up so fast with, with people fishing. But we're getting there now. A few more minutes. And but you can see how the trees up here the further north you go, it seems like the smaller they get. The shorter they get. But a lot of birch. A lot of birch up in this area. 
and maple. And that's pretty much a lot of you know stuff they did cut for the paper mill too. To hear the boat launch coming up, you'll see all the damn boats. Horrible. They'll get out early. They don't forget it. Some of these. Look at these. And it's such nice weather. I look at look at the on the right side here. The damn boats. Horrible. So many boats. Because you know it's only got like a one. I think maybe it does have two launcher areas over there, but they're rough. You know, because there's so much usage. And you got, you know, maintain those. They probably do it once a year to maintain it. Uh, so, and you know, as what it is, is it's getting close to uh, the end of the season when everybody gets ready to go back to school in September. So everybody's trying to get out, get their last few days of fishing in before they got to store the boats. And it's always a big rush in September to do that. But the weather's holding out. That's good, and it's not so much, you know, with the wind blowing the smoke away from the Canadian wildfires that have been going on. It's uh, it's a little bit clearer the skies, which is nice. Gold Shores, that's right. But that's not where we're going. A lot of there you go. And what's nice too is around here they have put in some bike paths along the, the road here so people can ride their bicycles or walk or whatever. They also have several snowmobile trails going through here along with ATVs. I don't know, I've heard both that you're not supposed to use the ATVs on the snowmobile trailers, trails during the summer, but people do the way it looks. I've seen them driving on it since I've been here. But the uh, it's maintained for the snowmobilers mainly. Alright, this should be the park coming up here on the right. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Voyager National Park, Granny Lake Visitor Center, and a boat launch. This is a little bit better area for parking and having a, getting your boat in. A little bit ways back in here, but you'll see how nice it looks. And here again, they got trails on the left side. I don't know. I don't know if skiers use those or not. Um, but uh, <coughs> they keep, yeah. You know, a lot of states are not putting in those trails like that. In Connecticut too, they do it like that, but. Very packed, very very busy. So people do like their trails, which is a good thing. Keeps you off the highway, so that you don't get hit by cars, you know, accidentally. And you know, so, because people sometimes you know walk around up here, people ain't paying attention, and you say, you know, you hit something. So it's always uh, better if you got a separate path for all that walking. A little bit of a windy road going back through here. And there uh, should be just a short little ride more. And we should be getting in there. Then we can get the boat in the water and head out towards Shea Shea. And uh, it's about maybe a quarter of a mile out of, instead of going all the way up to, yeah, up to Shea Shea. You launch, launch from here and you can take your boat up there instead of because it's a better boat launch here and it's not all the others are just so small 
and I think Shay Shay is going to charge to, I don't know, I can't say for sure that they do, but they might, more than likely. But uh, the roads are in good shape considering how you know, cold it gets up here and, and the uh, heat in the summer. And, you know, you go back to Connecticut, it seems like the roads are worse than this. Probably it looks like maybe a different type of mix. Um, uh, I don't know how that's formulated. I'm sure that there's different mixtures from different climates. Looks like we're getting close. I mean, so I see boat trailers parked. Holy buckets. Everywhere along the side of the road here. Look at this. And we aren't even at the boat launch yet. The boat launch here is to the right. Yeah, there's a lot of. There's a lot of boat. Uh, yeah. Lots of boats. Oh my god. Look at them all. Strung out like holy buckets. You get here late, this is what you run into. Look at the boats. Look at the cars. This is, oh, it's a wonderful day, isn't it? Especially for the fishing. You gotta be careful going through here. You don't want to hit anybody. And then you got your guy here to make sure everything's up to par, because it is a state park. Hey man, can I park here until he launches his boat? Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'll get...